police are trying to figure out what happened. Katrina Weber has the latest this noon. The San Antonio AIDS Foundation offering essential services to people in our community. However, during the pandemic, their efforts have slowed down. Stephen Gavasas tells us how the nonprofit is bouncing back. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. A call of concern has led to the discovery of a murder. San Antonio police say they found a man shot to death inside his upscale apartment off of La Quintero Parkway. As Katrina Weber reports, neighbors say they were blindsided by the crime. What had been a mysterious scene now has become a clear case for homicide investigators. San Antonio police revealed a few details this morning about the images we captured yesterday at the Towers Apartments on La Quintero Parkway. And I was just coming and I saw a lot of police and I was just minding my own business. Adrian Garza was just as puzzled by the police cars circling his building. A report now shows that officers discovered the scene inside a neighbor's apartment. Someone had called them worried after not hearing from that 34-year-old man. According to the police report, officers had to get the maintenance staff to let them into the man's apartment. And once inside, they found him dead from a gunshot wound. We heard a loud noise on Friday night. Um, but again, wasn't really sure if it was a uh, gunshot. This man who didn't want to give his name says he shrugged it off until he saw the scene yesterday. Now both he and Garza say they're stunned. This is a really good area. Um, it's totally like, rare to see this out here. It was pretty crazy, especially given, you know, this place is nice. So definitely didn't anticipate. Police, though, hope to solve this case soon. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We have some late breaking news uh, to tell you about coming up in just a minute, but right now an update on a story that we brought you as late breaking news yesterday. A chaotic chase followed by a shootout with police. This noon we're learning that that man is still in critical condition from multiple gunshot wounds. The scene first unfolded yesterday morning in Atascosa County. Police there say they pulled the suspect over in Pleasanton and everyone got out of his truck. But the driver then jumped back into the truck and sped off. The chase ensued with shots being fired. It eventually came to an end here in San Antonio on the southwest side near Allen Elementary, which was placed on lockdown. Then the driver got out of the truck with a gun. There was a shootout with the Bear County Sheriff's deputies and DPS troopers. The suspect hit by that gunfire and again taken to the hospital in critical condition. We do have new details this noon on a crash that came to a fiery end. Body cam video shows quick thinking officers were able to help some of the victims after they got stuck in their car. The crash happened Monday night near Callahan Road and Calabria Road. Police say a driver in a car ran a red light and then hit a driver in a white SUV. The driver in that SUV lost control, hit a light post, and then the vehicle burst into flames. You are looking at that body cam footage. Officers on the scene grabbed some fire extinguishers, tried to get the flames under control, and then they helped people get out of that SUV. I didn't even have to think twice of what I was doing. I immediately acted. Uh, my mind was racing, but uh, I knew the first thing that we had to do was get those people out uh, and get them to safety. The people who were in the crashed vehicle taken to the hospital, they should be okay. No one seriously hurt. Now to some late breaking news coming to us from the south side. There is a heavy police presence you might notice outside of South Park Mall right now. Alicia Barrera is standing by there right now. So Alicia, give us an update on what you can tell us about that situation. Right now it's very chaotic. We were actually pushed off the property of South Park, Mar uh, South Park Mall. Let me tell you exactly where this is happening. To the left of Dick's Sporting Goods. And right now you see a lot, a lot of police presence, ambulance. They're actually still working on that victim, trying to give him life-saving measures. What we know now is that there was a gentleman, young, described to be possibly in his 30s, and this is all information I'm receiving by witnesses. They say they saw him walk out into the parking lot right off of 35 with a gun in his hand. And the moment he pointed at officers, that's when those officers are reported to have fired multiple times against towards that victim, striking him. Again, right now we're waiting for San Antonio Police off, as Police Department to give a statement, give us more information of exactly what happened when they were called out here, because it seems as though they were uh, warned that this gentleman was inside the mall with a gun. To our right over here, I want to show you what we're seeing. 
it's blocked off. So if you're exiting military Sarsamora, you will not be able to as that is completely blocked off because this is an active scene. Right now we have uh, the San Antonio public information officers for the police department arriving on scene. So perhaps in the next few minutes we will be getting an update for them. But as of now, we know that this involves one gentleman who did have a handgun. That's what witnesses tell me. And they remember hearing multiple shots fired, about 20, one gentleman tells me. And I asked him where he was when he saw all this happen. He says that he was in the parking lot of Dick's Sporting Goods here when he saw that gentleman with the gun in his hand. And again, he recalls the, the gentleman pointing that gun towards officers and officers firing. Again, we're still waiting to receive all the details, but you can stick with us here on KSAT as well as KSAT.com. Reporting live from the south side, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Police finding a man's body in the street more than five years later, they're still searching for his killer. Police say Roland Hernandez was found dead in the 1200 block of El Paso Street back in August of 2015. Officers don't have a lot to go on. However, they do say Hernandez's death is suspicious. If you can help police find out what happened, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. The latest now on the COVID-19 numbers actually giving some people some hope. We are seeing a drop in new coronavirus cases and a drop in hospitalizations. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf does warn that we still have a long way to go. 1,353 COVID-19 patients are in the hospital, 404 are in the intensive care, and 271 are on ventilators. Judge Wolf said the last time we hit a surge, it took a month to reduce the number of patients in the hospital by 50%. The seven-day average dropped to 1,497, and 18 more folks have died after contracting the virus. Encourage and empower. It's been the mission of the San Antonio AIDS Foundation for more than 30 years now. But in the year of COVID-19, some tough choices had to be made. Testing was put on hold for a brief period, but that nonprofit has now figured out a way to bounce back from the pandemic. Stephen Cavasso shows us the new way the community can stay safe. It's a door that's stayed open since the 1980s, and three decades later, the San Antonio AIDS Foundation continues to offer support, along with free HIV and STD testing. But 2020 was the year the door closed, which meant those services were put on hold. Our testing, though, really, it stopped for a few months, unfortunately. SAFE CEO Sharice Roalagrini came on board in July of last year. Roalagrini also serves as a local epidemiologist. She says because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they had to limit the number of people inside. Royal Agrini says while staff did have some PPE, they were lacking in masks and face shields. But the nonprofit, she says, was up for the challenge. It took a few months to really get everything back up to speed. It's as simple as calling ahead, pulling up, and a prick on the finger. The nonprofit now provides free HIV and syphilis testing through curbside. Royal Agrini says within minutes, a person can know their status. She calls it convenient and safe. Coming in for HIV testing is absolutely the best thing you can do for your health and the health of others. Royal Agrini says with proper treatment, HIV is no longer a death sentence, but the stigma is still real. She believes COVID-19 has incited a familiar fear, but she encourages people to learn about prevention and be open to conversation. The same way we talked about HIV in terms of minimizing risk, that's how we need to talk about COVID. Now, during any ordinary year, SAFE usually tests around 6,000 people, but because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they were only able to test around 2,000 this last year. However, Royal Agrini hopes by sharing their story, it encourages people to take action, know their status, and expand their options. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. In the day ahead, our KSAT special, the COVID-19 vaccines ending the COVID-19 pandemic. We are dedicating an hour to look into the science behind the vaccines, how they were developed so quickly and what they mean for the future. That's today at seven o'clock right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app. Across the country, we are seeing cases and hospitalizations going down. However, the virus is taking more than 3,000 lives a day, according to John Hopkins University. Meanwhile, President Biden maintains he has a plan. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, part of that plan includes buying more dosages of the vaccine. With nearly 80,000 COVID-19 deaths reported, January has now become the deadliest month of the pandemic, according to Johns Hopkins University. When the tears come, it's it's 
they're real and, and they mostly come because the, the patients themselves are are crying. But President Biden says he has a plan. This is a wartime undertaking. He's vowing to buy an additional 100 million doses of both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, bringing available doses to 600 million, enough to vaccinate 300 million Americans by the end of this summer. Continuing to expand safe, effective vaccination is key to ending the COVID-19 pandemic. The new administration also promising to give local officials a supply forecast three weeks out. This is going to help make sure governors, mayors, and local leaders have greater certainty around supply. For now, many appointments are being canceled, and those lucky enough to get a shot are waiting in long lines coast to coast. Seniors in Kansas had to stand in a cold parking lot for hours to get vaccinated. Not everybody has somebody that can assist them walk through the line or keep from slipping on the ice. The CDC is still warning about extracurricular activities and high contact sports, particularly wrestling, where it's difficult to wear a mask and therefore tough to prevent infection. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. As a reminder, we want you to join us for our virtual mental health awareness town hall. It's today at two o'clock. We have a panel of experts to explain mental illness and share how you can make a difference. You can find more information at ksatcommunity.com. Expect some cold temperatures tomorrow morning. More cloud cover too on your Thursday and Friday. We'll talk about the forecast coming up. As of now, it looks like a go for the Spurs and Celtics tonight. That's not the video of the Spurs or the Celtics. All right, this is the right video. If you That's ordered it. Girl Scout cookies, yeah. the wait is almost over. We're going to explain after the break. It is one of the best times of the year, Girl Scout cookie season. Millions of cookies started arriving today. So if you ordered cookies, you should be receiving them soon. The Girl Scout cookie program aims to teach girls about entrepreneurship, as well as skills like money management, public speaking, and decision making. If the Girl Scout you ordered cookies from is picking them up today, you could get them as early as this weekend. If not, you'll start getting them next week. They also learn how to put smiles on people's faces. To find Girl Scouts selling cookies near you or order online, visit GirlScoutCookies.org. This year, Cookie Lovers will also be able to order cookies via Grubhub starting February 5th through the 28th. Oh, you can taste them, can't you? Ooh, Stop so it. The COVID-19, you know, pounds <laughs> will be preventing me from getting Girl Scout cookies. Oh, come on. you got to bust out one or two. I'm just going to make a donation. Isn't it amazing, though, in this day and age, you can get Girl Scout cookies on Grubhub? <laughs> I mean, technology <laughs> They make it too just, easy. It is insane. Okay, uh, we've got some blue skies out there, a few clouds trying to work across the sky, too. The aquifer down two tenths of a foot to 655.4 in your pollen count. Both mountain cedar and mold went down, but the mountain cedar is still high, 4,920. Mold's moderate, and elm shows up today for the first time. Uh, we're going to talk about some cold temperatures tomorrow morning and maybe a, a very small rain chance on Saturday. We've got the forecast coming up. I think spring has come too early. Elm in the air already, and then you had those tornadoes just north of Birmingham over the weekend and more tornadoes. Today. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, we're, we're just getting some reports out of Florida, guys, of a tornado that touched down at about 1045 this morning near Tallahassee. Uh, what is interesting about this is it moved right over the airport, it looks like, and that's where the radar is. So it looks like it took out the radar, uh, but the report uh, coming in, uh, again, I guess it's just on the north side of the, of the city of Tallahassee, and there was damage reported. If you look on social media, it looks like there is some trees down, that sort of thing. Obviously, there'll be uh, out there looking at the damage to determine how strong this tornado would be, but pretty good radar uh, signal before the radar went out that there was indeed a tornado there. So the same storm system that caused the tornadoes around Birmingham, this is kind of a spring-like situation, right? You can get tornadoes in January, uh, just not as common. Uh, that storm system, by the way, will finally move off the, uh, the coast and uh, hopefully things will calm down a little bit there across the southeast. What we're dealing with today are some gusty winds. Uh, we've got some gusts up over 20 miles per hour 
basically uh, across the area. We're going to continue to see this next couple of hours, so it's going to be sort of breezy. Forecast calls for wind gusts up around 20, maybe 25. They're about 3 or 4 o'clock, and then I think the winds will start to calm down some as we go into tonight. Uh, looking at the time lapse, we've had high clouds all day, made for a nice sunrise, but they've been with us. And so we'll see uh, partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies, 62 degrees. Northerly winds at 13 at the moment. Dew point is at 27. The air is extremely dry. 61 right now in Comfort, 59 Canyon Lake, 65 in New Braunfels, 62 Stinson, 66 right now in Pleasanton, 61 Creaso Springs, 67 in Catula. And I mentioned the dew points. Well, we're in the desert air category here. Uh, that doesn't change today or tomorrow. Now by Friday, we will start to see moisture returning. You'll, you'll see these dew points jump up, but it is dry across the entire state and really even as you go west. So that's going to keep any rain out of the forecast for now. There's no storm systems moving through. We're sort of in between systems, and uh, you can see uh, that we've got mostly clear skies, but those high clouds streaming in from the Pacific. As we go west, this is our next storm system, and it is bringing a ton of rain and heavy snowfall to parts of the west coast. This will dive south and then work its way towards the middle part of the country. It is not really going to move in our direction. Well, it'll move towards North Texas, but not us. And so we're missing out on a lot of the energy uh, as it moves east. And so our rain chances are really pretty low with it. If you look at temperatures across the country, negative five International Falls, 12 in Minneapolis. There is some, finally, <laughs> feels like some colder stuff up north. And some of that is uh, sinking towards places like Omaha, where it's 1929 St. Louis, where there was snow this morning. The warm spot continues to be Florida, 79 in Orlando, and that's one of the reasons they're getting some of the severe weather there. Our forecast, again, calls for more of those high mid-level clouds. They'll be coming in tomorrow. Friday will be a mostly cloudy day, too, I think. And then here comes our storm system on Saturday. Saturday morning, we could see some drizzle, but nothing significant. And this is around 5 o'clock, uh, maybe midday through about uh, four or five, we could see a shower or two north and east of San Antonio, but the main action is going to be up here across northeast Texas. So by and large, we're missing out on any rain here. And uh, as we go into tomorrow morning, should warn you, temperatures will be pretty chilly around here. 35 degrees in San Antonio. We'll see some freezing temperatures, I think, up in the hill country. So here's how it looks on the seven-day forecast. 61 tomorrow, 64 Friday, 75 Saturday, mostly cloudy, some morning drizzle, and just a very slight chance of a shower during the afternoon. Otherwise, Sunday, sunny and breezy, a little cooler, and Groundhog's Day. Tuesday. Oh, my goodness, already? We're there. We're there. We'll find out what our little rodent friend has to say about how long ago winter's going to last. Groundhogs or rodents? I believe so. Looks like a fat little rodent right there. <laughs> Dude, he put on bad. the COVID-19 yeah, as well. There you go. So, it's still coming up. We're going to take a look at this first Celtic game tonight and the ups and downs of high school basketball playoffs. Next. As of now, Spurs and Celtics scheduled for tonight in the AT&T Center is a go. However, the head basketball coach of, Bra of Boston, Brad Stevens, had a few concerns. He was wondering if it was a good idea for Boston to face the Spurs just two days after the Spurs game against the New Orleans Pelicans in New Orleans was postponed due to COVID-19 testing and contact tracing, affecting both teams who couldn't suit up for the required eight players they needed. The Celtics arrived in town yesterday after playing the Bulls Monday. There is still plenty of time between now and dip-off time, though. Here's a look at the matchup tonight. It is Boston. Remember, the Spurs start a five-game homestand tonight, 7.30 against the Celtics. And then Friday, it's Denver. Saturday, it's Memphis for the first of back-to-backs against the Green. Texas Longhorns Athletic Director Chris Del Conte has been appointed as one of the five new members of the College Football Selection Committee. The new members will begin serving their three-year term starting this spring and will be a part of the decision-making process of who gets to participate in next year's college football playoffs. And the San Antonio Sports All-Star Football Game presented by HEB set for this Saturday at Hero Stadium. It's going to feature 112 players representing 62 high schools that is normally played earlier in the month right after the All-American Bowl in the Alamo Dome. But during this pandemic, officials thought it would be better to hold off the event outside. The All-Stars would be divided into two teams, the black and gold with the black coached by Reagan High School's Lyndon Hamilton and the gold will be coached by David Branscombe of Brandeis. We visited with a gold team first and features some of the city's great quarterbacks in Jordan Battles out of Holy Cross, Zach Schwalen from Antonian, Cannon Williams from Harlan, who is already committed to UIW, and Ty Reasoner from Johnson, who's headed to Air Force. 
it's definitely something I've grown up watching. You know, I've always wanted to play in it. And, you know, opening my bag yesterday and seeing that number one team gold jersey, you know, that's something that I've been thinking about for a long time. So, yeah, it feels good. It means everything to me. I've been watching this all-star game for years and years and years. So, you know, just not being able to, being able to have a chance to play in it means everything to me. Kickoff Saturday, Hero Stadium set for 2 o'clock. There are limited tickets available at $10 each. All right, heading to last night's high school basketball game, Justin Rockets undefeated in district taking on East Central. They were trying to stay in the playoff picture. One minute left, Rockets up 59-58. The Hornets' Michael Martin goes around the green, pulls up for the jumper, knocks it down. Later, Hornets at a free throw. It's 61-59. East Central, Justin's last shot with under 20 to go. Donovan Gomez creates space with jab step, gets in the lane, hits the Tony Parker teardrop. It's 61 all going to OT. In the extra period, the Hornets' Anston Bryant Kelly spots Jeremiah, Jeremiah Brooks, and that's going to hurt. Hornets upset the Rockets in overtime, 75-72. Special night at Southside. Cardinals hosting McCollum senior point guard Alexis Martinez came into the game meeting just five points to clear 1,000 in her career. Second quarter, there was the three, and that was it. The milestone created. Fans erupted in the stands. The ones that are made a lot of noise so far, but Southside ends up making too many plays down the stretch. Ashley Contu drive lay in. She had a game high 19 Cardinals win at 55 38, but a thousand points in your high school basketball career. Well, that's something she'll remember for a long yeah, time. Yeah, way to go Good for her. Yep. New today at five. Do you have an air fryer? They've definitely changed the way many people cook, but what can't you cook in them today at five after entertainment tonight? Just weeks after the deadly Capitol insurrection, only five Republican senators have voted to move forward with former President Donald Trump's historic second impeachment trial for allegedly inciting it. Arguments in the trial are set to begin in the second week of February. In the meantime, the investigation into the January 6th assault continues, with the FBI reporting that it has made 135 arrests. ABC's Elizabeth Schultz is in Washington with the latest. Three weeks ago, a violent mob of pro-Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in an attack that left five people dead. And now support in the Senate to hold former President Trump accountable for the insurrection appears to be fading. 45 GOP senators voted to dismiss Trump's second impeachment trial as unconstitutional because he's no longer in office. That this is not a trial of the president, but of a private citizen. Only five Republicans voting with Democrats to move forward with the trial. 17 Republicans would need to join all Democrats to vote to convict. And while a conviction wouldn't remove Trump from office, it could lead to a second vote, barring him from holding federal office in the future. What Trump did was the most despicable thing any president has ever done. I believe he should be convicted. Both sides now have two weeks to prepare their cases before the trial starts the week of February 8th. Meantime, the investigation into the breach of the Capitol continues. The FBI says it's identified more than 400 suspects and made 135 arrests. And Justice Department officials said on a conference call Tuesday they're building towards possible charges of sedition for some of the rioters. We are closely looking at evidence related to the sedition charges. The results will bear fruit very soon. And during closed testimony, the acting chief of the Capitol Police apologized to lawmakers for not being more prepared for the January 6th attack, saying in remarks obtained by ABC News, we knew there was a strong potential for violence and that Congress was the target. And CNN is reporting Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene reportedly recorded a video before she was elected saying House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason and that treason is an executable offense. In a statement on Twitter, Green did not apologize for the comments and said that other people often run her page and that some of the posts don't reflect her views. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News. Washington. Meantime, a new report from the CDC says if the proper precautions are taken, it is safe for children to attend classes in person. The scientists looked at three months worth of data from 17 schools in rural Wisconsin. The schools required all students and teachers to follow strict safety protocols, including mask wearing and social distancing. During those three months, 191 students and staff tested positive for COVID, but only seven were connected to the spread of the disease at school. 
and all seven of those were students. Since the start of the pandemic, teachers across the country have been concerned about in-person teaching. One teacher in Wisconsin says she ended up contracting the virus after returning to the classroom. Not everyone uses the same level of caution and there's going to be interactions. As much as we try to minimize them, we still need to take care of our students. The coronavirus continues to spread. The number of American children getting sick is worrying. More than 165,000 new child COVID cases reported last week. And children represent 12.7% of confirmed COVID cases across the country. Nearly 5,000 people in the Santa Cruz Mountains have been ordered to immediately evacuate their homes to avoid potentially dangerous mudslides. ABC's Will Carr is in Santa Cruz, California with the latest. Here in Santa Cruz, thousands of people are being told to get out now after we had a historic fire season here in California. You can still see charred trucks here and let me show you what the big concern is as you cross this road. Californians have been hoping for rain, but it's really a double edged sword because we're expecting up to 10 inches of rain in the coming hours. That's going to make these hillsides so slick that all of this mud could come flying down, carrying debris with it and potentially destroying some of the homes in this area. We're also expecting the potential for avalanches in the mountainsides and power outages across this area. Add it all up and these are going to be some dangerous situations over the next 48 hours. In Santa Cruz, Will Carr, ABC News. Live look outside. You here looking at more clouds, but a little bit chilly too. Yeah, you know, we're in the 60s right now. It's cooler than it was yesterday. You see some of those clouds. They're the thin kind of clouds that uh, the sun will still shine through, but it's just not the full sun. You won't get those temperatures to really ramp up. Let's take a look at some of the weather headlines. It'll be breezy today. We'll get those high clouds moving across the sky and then a cold start tomorrow morning. You'll want the jackets as you head off to work and school on your Thursday morning. It says uh, Wednesday. I meant Thursday. Uh, more clouds Friday and Saturday. And uh, we'll see maybe a little bit of drizzle Saturday morning uh, to start. Visible satellite picture shows we've got uh, mostly clear skies other than those uh, thin high clouds that you can see here on the visible satellite picture moving through. Looks like a little bit of leftover snow on the ground up there across parts of the Texas Panhandle as well. We are in between storm systems right now, so all is quiet. It is cold, though, in Amarillo, 29 degrees there, 39 in Wichita Falls, 47 in Dallas. We've got 60s and 70s down here across South Texas. Our forecast calls for breezy conditions. We'll be up around 68 degrees by 4 o'clock. Northwesterly winds 10 to 20 miles per hour. And then tonight, temperatures will fall off fairly quickly. We're talking 30s tomorrow morning. We'll look ahead to the weekend for you coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Yet another company has taken aim at TikTok's throne, and it's totally crushing it with new features. Details. Go ahead. And the countdown to Super Bowl 55 is on. We're learning new details about the halftime show, which is going to look different this year. Very different. Plus, a very special addition to the pregame festivities. We'll explain after the break. Baseball legend Hank Aaron being laid to rest today in Atlanta. The service closed to the public due to COVID-19 restrictions, but it is being live streamed. Matter of fact, we're going to show you a live look of it here in just a second. Former President Bill Clinton and former Atlanta mayor and UN ambassador Andrew Young will be guest speakers. Aaron died last week at the age of 86. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office says the baseball legend and Hall of Famer died of natural causes. Football fans gearing up for Super Bowl 55, but the major event's going to have something to offer for everyone. Inaugural poet Amanda Gorman is going to be part of the Super Bowl 55 pregame show, and so will Miley Cyrus. The NFL's first ever TikTok tailgate pregame is going to have an audience full of healthcare heroes. The NFL is only allowing 22,000 fans to be in the stands for the big game. However, halftime headliner The Weeknd is using the limitations to his advantage. We're gonna use the stadium to present the show in a way that it's never been presented before. It is absolutely a live, live halftime show inside that stadium in more places than you would expect. The national anthem is gonna be a duet between country music singer Eric Church and R&B star Jasmine Sullivan. 
Grammy award-winning artist Her will sing America the Beautiful. I can't feel my face when I'm with you. That's the weekend. You didn't know, you didn't know I knew that, did you? I'm just shocked. Look, she's stunned that I, am, I, I knew I a song from the weekend. I am speechless. <laughs> David is cool, man. Hey, I'm He's hip and trendy, baby. Can I tell you, he sang that song so many times <laughs> over the last He's been practicing years. that. He has. Uh, 62 degrees so far today. 49 the low this morning. The averages are 64 and 41. We'll actually be pretty close to the averages today. Records are 84 and 18. Set way back once again in 1897. Uh, we're going to talk about some warmer temperatures by the weekend. Maybe a small rain chance too. We'll update that forecast coming up. I want to get you to an update on that late breaking news on the south side. There is still a heavy police presence outside of South Park Mall, but we just got an update from the police chief, Alicia Barrera, with that. Good afternoon. Well, let me tell you, this all began with a traffic stop and ended in a deadly shooting. We just spoke, heard from Chief McManus himself, who confirmed that the suspect is confirmed to be deceased on the scene. They tell us he was driving an 18 wheeler and a Department of Transportation inspector tried to pull that driver of the 18 wheeler over. That driver stopped but ran into the mall. He was then asked to leave by mall security. At that point, when he started making his way out on the east side of Dick's Sporting Goods on the Fredinch Road of 35 South, that's when he had a handgun. Officers were already waiting for him outside. And that's when that encounter between San Antonio police officers as well as that suspect took place. That suspect pulling out his handgun, pointing it towards officers and officers shot. We don't know exactly exactly how many shots were fired, but we have confirmed that four veteran officers with the San Antonio Police Department are involved between 10 to 26 years uh, serving in San Antonio PD. Again, this all began with that traffic stop. Uh, we know that that suspect, that deceased victim, deceased suspect, excuse me, was pronounced dead. Uh, he's in his mid 20s right now. Not much information has been given on who he is or exactly where he was coming from or headed to. But again, this did begin as a traffic stop and ended on a deadly shooting. And right now for drivers, if you're headed around this area, 35 South, know that between military and Sarsamora, there's no getting through. You will be asked to seek an alternate route. Reporting live from the city's south side, Alicia Barrera, KSA 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. All right, let's get the weather a little cooler today than it has been all week. Mm -hmm. We'll stay in the 60s today, guys, and with some of that cloud cover out there, we're probably not going to get too much warmer from where we are right now. I uh, want to touch on the aquifer real quick because you know what? We're doing okay. It's uh, actually kind of impressive considering we've been so dry, uh, especially as we ended last year on a dry note. But uh, we're at 665.4 today. 10 day average is 665.3, so we're above that 660 mark, still technically in stage one, but we're moving in the right direction. So that looks good. Uh, rainfall this year has not been great. 1.02 for the year, and we're about half an inch below the average. We could certainly use some more. I would like to tell you that we get some with this next system, but it's not looking great. There is an, a very small window, a small opportunity uh, to get a little bit of rain on Saturday, but I, I don't think we're going to see much at all. As we go outside for you right now, we've got uh, some high clouds working through the sky. 62 degrees. Northerly winds at about 13 miles per hour. Winds have been breezy today. Take a look at the forecast for those winds as we get towards uh, say the afternoon winds will be gusting 2025 20, I think by five o'clock you'll start to see these winds calm some and uh, by tonight we're talking five to ten miles per hour so less than away of those northwesterly winds and hopefully those gusty winds that we're seeing today do not kick up the mountain cedar numbers tomorrow temperature wise 60 in Boulevard 65 in New Braunfels 59 Bernie State 60 right now in Tarpley 55 Lost Maples and some 60s down to the south, Catula 67, 63, Carrizo Springs, and one of the warm spots, Kennedy, checking in at 68. The air is extremely dry, northerly and northwesterly winds. It's always going to draw in the, the lower dew points, and that's exactly where we are. We've got desert air in place, and it's not until Friday that these dew points start to come back up and we get more moisture in place, but uh, not the case right now. Across Texas, uh, we mentioned it is very, very quiet. We've got some of those thin high clouds working in out of the Pacific. That's it, no rain clouds. And looking across the country, we've got one storm system moving off the east coast, another one producing some snow around St. Louis and to parts of Illinois, then a big storm system out west. This one is producing a ton of rain, heavy snow for the west coast. It's good to see the rain 
in California. They, they do need it, but it's contributing to mudslides because they had all those fires uh, last year. So it's just uh, sort of an unfortunate situation here. This, this storm system will move through California and eventually work towards the plains. A little too far north of a track for us to get any beneficial rain, as uh, we talked about. And that's what the computer models are showing. So as we get into uh, this afternoon, again, these high clouds continue to stream in. I think they actually thicken up a little bit tomorrow. So partly to mostly cloudy on your Thursday and Friday will be a mostly cloudy day too, I think. On Saturday morning, there's enough moisture back in place where we could see some drizzle to start. And then this frontal boundary should be through by the afternoon. I think we actually will get some clearing on the after, uh, during Saturday afternoon, but uh, maybe a shower or two uh, could also develop off to our north and east. And then by Saturday night, front is through, and Sunday we should see some clearing and a pretty nice day. So temperatures up around 68 degrees today, but down to 35 degrees tonight. 61 tomorrow, 64 on Friday, and then 75 Saturday. So morning drizzle, a 10% chance of a stray shower or storm, and that's going to be mainly east of I-35. Turning breezy and somewhat cooler on Sunday, 70 degrees, and then 60s as we officially go into February. Can't believe that's already here. And uh, we'll see if temperatures stay mild through the month of February. He's not going to see a shadow. No, we'll see. Okay. Groundhog's Day is Tuesday. We'll be right back. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. This item is already one of our most popular, a new one-year Sam's Club membership. This yearly membership is typically $45, but not today. It's only $28.88, and you get this for free, the Sam's Club Seasoned Rotisserie Chicken and the 8-Count Gourmet Cupcakes. Now, there are some important details and steps that you'll need to follow. After your KSAT Deals purchase, you'll get a confirmation email to redeem your purchase. Use the link to finalize your membership. Enter your information and activate your membership. Watch for your confirmation email, and once you've done this, you can pick up your membership card at the nearest Sam's Club. Now, be sure to read the email confirmation and sign up now to start saving lots of money. The KSAT Deals price on this $28.88. Head over to KSATDeals.com for this one and many more. Universal Orlando Resort now offering the first ever Military Freedom Pass. Military members and their families can use the passes to visit two or all three of Universal's theme parks. They can be used any day of the year. The passes start at $199 per adult and they can be picked up with valid identification at authorized military ticket and travel offices. And they can be used at Universal through December 31st. Beyonce has released her third Ivy Park fashion collection in collaboration with Adidas. The line is called Icy Park and it's filled with streetwear, footwear and winter pieces for her fans. The ad campaign features Beyonce, Haley Baldwin, Bieber and Gucci main wearing pieces from the line. The two lines released in January 2020 and then fall both sold out. And David's already, you know, because he's so hip and trendy. Uh -huh. He's already bought some of this, right? Yeah, I remember when Adidas first came out. Coach and you in called high school, it Adidas? Yeah, Coach in high school had a shirt. We had no idea how to pronounce <laughs> it. That's how old I am. No idea. It was like, what is that Adidas on your That's shirt? That's pretty funny. Yeah. All right. It's time for <laughs> SA Live. <laughs> I just kind of lost you with that conversation. Right? <laughs> well, don't worry. Don't you worry. You're during the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to help you stay hip. You know, we are going to get you game day ready. Oh, yes, indeed. Because the big part about the game, not the score, the food. And what do you got to get you a whole big party pack? Yes, Victor Carrizales, manager at Mi Tierra, joins us. And you have got five snacks every party has to have. And they're in this box. We're not going to reveal them, but this is part of one, right? Correct. Classic okay. guacamole, right? What's in there? Uh, we have uh, tomato, onion, cilantro. With a, an we're going to touch it with an amazing splash of lemon. Okay, there Ooh, we go. That looks so good. And that's just one of the many. I mean, all the, the accoutrement to go with all of the snacks that you're going to need for Ooh, the big game. And yes. then you got to wash it down, right? Yes, if you need a drink. Oh, well, when it comes to wine pairings, you don't want to make poor decisions. So our Jen Tobias Strusky chats with a winemaker to get some great advice. You know, sometimes the, the simple things, the old timey things are the best. How about a great way to get the family together? Some new versions of this, maybe from your childhood, we're gonna show you 
uh, some, some great examples. All right, and we're gonna tell you how you can win a Spurs jersey. Yeah, it's got the great, you know, kind of the new of the old with the throwback the Yesta colors on it. It's uh, something kind of sweet and includes dessert, but a special kind, a very specific dessert. Yes, all that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes. Pass the guacamole.